large intellectual capital. But still, the quality of education is very poor in many parts of the world. Some years ago, I was visiting this government school in a village. And there were just two teachers in the school. Six standard children, they were playing outside. They happily took me to their class when I went there. I told them, we'll play a word game with. I'll write English words on the board. If they can read it, they'll get points. If they can tell me the meanings of those words in local language, they'll get more points. And the reward was my pen for the highest scorer. I didn't carry anything better that day. The reward was very small. But the idea of reward was very attractive. Children were very excited. So on the board, I wrote W-E-R-D -E and asked one child to read. She read where? So she could read the word, but she was pronouncing it wrong. Next I wrote the second word, W-I-N-D. -E. Asked another child to read. She could not. I tried a few more children who did not read either. Then finally one child screamed, Will. So I played this game with them for some more time. What I observed was that most of the children there could not read English words. Those who could read, they pronounced it wrong. And very few knew the meanings of those words in local language. Making phrases and sentences was way beyond them. In any case, I had to part with my pen. But this experience made me think. I wondered if the situation is any different in other rural schools. So I started to go through, I started going through these reports from NGOs like Pratham. They showed that more than 70% of children in India go to rural government vernacular medium schools. But sadly, the teacher availability there is just about 33%. That means each teacher is handling multiple classes at the same time. Added to that, a good number of those teachers are underqualified. Considering all this, it's a wonder that those children had learnt even that much English. But to survive in today's globalized world, they have to learn English and learn it well. Otherwise, it will be a huge loss for the country. I am sure the story is very similar in many parts of the world. And the world is underutilizing a lot of brilliant minds because of this. So how do you address this? I started talking to people. Many people said, hey, how about evening classes? Weekend events. Lot of very good ideas. But the fact is, most of these won't even reach a fraction of child population in the rural belt. So any solution that you can think of should help the children learn by themselves in their own language. It should offer each child an opportunity to learn at his own pace. It should make learning an interactive process. It should make learning a fun-filled experience. It should help with both self-learning and peer learning. Not just that, it should offer a stimulating teaching aid for the teachers. They need help too. It should work with or without internet. And the list goes on. But most importantly, it should be scalable. Look at this wish list through the eyes of a seasoned engineer. What you will see is a technology-based solution. After coming to this conclusion, I partnered with a well-qualified, like-minded person and started working on it. The first step was to create software infrastructure because we both were engineers. We were good at software development. So we created software infrastructure 
using which anyone could develop interactive content with local language support. That was very critical, local language support. The second step was the software application to render this content on portable devices like tablets. The recipe was very simple indeed. Text to speech support for English. Dictionary help with context sensitive meanings in local languages. Continuous evaluation. And more importantly, the ability to dynamically tailor the content to the pace of each child's learning. So once we had this software infrastructure built, we created content for one English chapter. We added lots of pictures, animations, and we put that on a low-cost tablet, took it to a village school, and let the children play with it. Children just loved it. They took to it like fish to water. The teachers loved it too. In fact, they were eager to get all the chapters in English and other subjects as well. That was a good time to ask help, to seek help from others. What we did was, we deployed our content creation software online. And we called for volunteers. Many, many people came forward to help. Youngsters, stay-at-home mothers, students, working folk, and so on. They created content for textbook chapters and enriched that with lots of nice pictures, animations, sounds of birds, sounds of animals, even maps were needed, and so on. We got one of our volunteers, an artist, to compose tunes for English poems. With that, children started to look at English poems as songs, and they immensely enjoyed learning them. Let me show you an example. Fifth standard child reciting a poem from a textbook. Observe the fluency, observe the pronunciation and the confidence in her. She is a rich lad, oh she is a fresh and fair lad. She is a dear and rare lad, this native land of mine, this native land of mine. No man than thoughts are braver, her women's hearts never waver. I would freely die to save her and think my Lord divine. She is not a dull or cold land. No, she is a warm and bold land. Oh, she is a true and gold land. This native land of mine. Oh, she is a fresh and fair land. Oh, she is a true and rare land. Yes, she is a rare and fair land. Among the volunteers, there were two who deserve a special mention here. One of them is a very bright boy from an international school. He was in ninth standard when he started on this. He created interactive content for many English chapters. He did that with a great passion. No wonder those children in village schools loved every chapter that he put together. Believe me when I say this, till today, till today, we had not met him face to face at all. Because everything was done using our online tools. The second volunteer was even younger. She was in sixth standard when she started on this. She was studying in another IM school in Bangalore. She put together simple PowerPoint based animation for concepts in mathematics. That made mathematics a lot of fun for those children. And it provided an excellent teaching aid for those teachers to use in the class. Now, we have more girls in those village schools interested in learning mathematics, willing to take that you know, chance to uh, solve the mathematic problems. The effort put together by these people resulted in a fantastic self-learning tool. Let me show you an example of six standard child reciting or rather reading English lesson using this solution. 
Again, observe the pronunciation. I should tell you that this child was taking hell for most of the words when she started. But today you will see that she is taking hell only for difficult words and reading the rest confidently. So we came from paper textbooks and shortage of teachers to self-learning using cool tabs and interactive content with the solution. Today, we have 1,100 children in 30 different village schools enjoying self-learning using this solution. All this is free of cost. Here is a typical classroom scene in that village school, in one of the village schools. Children are so engrossed in learning, even when there are no teachers around. And teachers are a happy lot because they are facilitators now. They can focus on children on, on their needs, based on their needs. And not to forget, this provides an excellent teaching aid for them to use in their class. So this has significantly increased the self-confidence of those children and their teachers. The introduction of digital learning through curricular content has set the stage for further learning. That further learning can make use of wealth of content on internet. But today, we have serious connectivity issues in rural India. Even if you have to assume that the connectivity issues will be resolved somehow, there is still a huge language barrier to address. Because of this, a vast majority of our rural children are losing out the opportunity of using internet as a source of information. And that's very unfortunate. Hence, enriching relevant content with context-sensitive meanings in local languages is extremely important. Such a content will prepare these children for independent learning in the future. Don't think this is true only for India. This is also true for many parts, other parts of the world, like countries in East Asia, Africa and so on. But this is easier said than done. India alone has more than 20 official languages. Add to this the languages from other countries. The task is simply humongous. And this is where crowdsourced intellectual capital can help. As I said earlier, all our volunteers created content from, their, from the comfort of their own homes. They used our online tools to do that. So anyone from anywhere in the world can join and help. If every talented person can create content, for one short topic with local language support, we can build a wealth of content that will transform our world and take our children to new heights of learning. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me share a dream with you. Children from even the remotest corner of the world should be able to learn English or any other language or any concept using just the gadgets available. And much more importantly, they should be able to teach the rest of the world about their ways, their thoughts, their flora and fauna, and many other interesting things around them, and thereby enrich our lives. Thank you.